Alrighty, so I'm gonna do a technique review video and this one is going to be about your basic techniques for the right and left hand and i'm going to break them down and like teach them again so if you need to review the concepts you can however it, uh, after you've watched this video i would just then you don't have to really watch it again unless you want to review again i will make a second video that is our technique warm-up and that one i'll just go through faster so you can just play with me and you don't have all the explanations in between. However, I did want to do one with all the explanations so that if you forgot some things, I can remind you now. All right, so our first thing we do in class is our bow hold. So go ahead and review the bow hold with me. I'm going to break it down again, and then I will do this again without talking, uh, but on a different video. That will be a second video. All right, here we go. Basic techniques. There's three things we do with the bow hold, and then three things we do with the left arm. And then actually there's also three things we do with the fingers, which I don't think we got to yet, but I'll add them on this video because they're quite simple. All right, here we go. Bow hold is here. My thumb, again, is, oh, now it's really dark because I have a music stand blocking the light. Okay, so we've got my thumb, and I'm going to use this corner part of my thumb, just that little edge where my thumbnail and my finger meet each other, so it's like that edge of my thumb. It's going to go right here. So my thumb isn't coming underneath like this, but it's on the corner. I'm gonna wrap my middle fingers around it, like so. Middle finger touches the silver, this silver part, and then the ring finger is just right next to it. So we've got, this is our bunny bow hold, and we wanna check that our thumb is flexible and that there's an open space here. And then our pinky goes on, and if you're a violin or viola player, you're going to put it on the stick. And there's actually a little ridge. You can feel the ridge of that shape of the bow. It's an octagon, there's eight sides there. Now you're gonna move it. It's not gonna be on this edge or it'll slip off. So you wanna pull it back just behind the stick a little bit and you'll feel there's a ridge. If you're a viol or if you're a cello or bass player, it's life is easy and you just wrap it around like so because you're coming from below. However, us that are going from above need to be here. And then we all do our pointer fingers the same. I pet it like a little cat, meow, meow and you can feel the ridge of that, um, the grip right there, okay? So that's what that grip is for your pointer finger, okay? So once you've re reviewed your bow hold, then we're gonna do our bow clock. And our bow, bow, bow clock includes all three exercises we need to do with the bow every day. Here we are, circle, two, and while you're circling, make sure you can feel your pointer finger, your pinky, and your thumb all working, tick. Pointer finger, thumb, and finger are, are, pointer finger, thumb, and pinky are all working together to make circles. And make sure your shoulders are relaxed. And there's a right angle between your arm and your body. Your arm is nice and tall, so you're building strength. Oop, my pinky fell off because I had it on the wrong part of the stick. One, two, three, and freeze. Now violins and violas are gonna do some pinky push-ups. And this is to strengthen the muscle that's um, connected to your pinky finger. Again, arm, arms are straight, shoulders are relaxed. And let's do four more. Two, three, and whoa, I dropped it again because my pinky was in the wrong spot. So as you can see, I need to practice that too. We'll do it together. For now, we're gonna come here to the upper, uh, pointing up the vertical plane. And we're gonna make some circles. Now my thumb and my pointer finger are working together again. My arm is straight. And now do remember, Right here, we're going to add a third exercise. This is the last exercise we do. We do the circles, we do the pinky push-ups, and then we do what I like to call knuckle compressions. And compressions are when you squeeze things together. And what you'll notice is that we're going to squeeze our knuckles in and we're going to release them. Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. And I do want you to do this. Well, I really like to knock into that. What I do want you to do is this. Straight arm, relaxed shoulders. The straight arm builds strength. It builds muscle, um, what's the word for that? When you can run a whole long marathon, you have endurance, there it is. Uh, you're building muscle endurance by holding your arm out for a long period of time. Because when you play music, you have to hold your arm up forever. The whole time you're playing it, you have to hold it up. So this should be not too hard to do. Compress, relax. If you can't move that like this, you can take it off and just practice squeezing and releasing and squeezing and releasing and then eventually you don't want it to be that tense you really just want to lift and relax and none of the my fingers are just totally floppy and what's moving is my knuckles 
<coughs> Excuse me. I know I don't have coronavirus, but I did have strep, and it's almost done going away. And then that's that. So let's try it back on the bow. Uh, cellos and basses will have to do this on the string. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay, let's see that. And what that's going to allow you to do is play in the lower half of the bow. Play really our, the lower corner. Because right here you can see my bow hold looks pretty much the same, but right here, I really, really, really have to compress. And the same thing happens on the cello. Okay, so that's what that motion is for. And it's the easiest for violins to do it when we're vertical, easiest for cellos to do on the string. So when we get vertical, cellos and basses can just come here and do that. All right, now we're here. We did some compressions, we did some circles. Now we go to vertical, but the hair is facing up. And again, we just do a few circles here. We feel the pointer finger and the pinky playing a little game. And the thumb is helping as well. And this, one's, this one is a good stretch. It shouldn't hurt, so if it hurts, make sure you're sitting tall, make sure your arms are out straight and not lift, if you lift it up, it starts to hurt. So this one should be nice and flat. And then again, I'm making circles and it should feel almost the same. This one is hard for me still a little bit. So if it feels awkward, that's okay. You can try it again tomorrow. So all of that should feel relaxed and wonderful and easy. If it doesn't, breathe, relax, reset, and try something a little bit different. Okay, well, there we go. I'm getting Facebook messages because I'm so popular. All right, here we go. Next little bit of review. So we're doing a three-part review here. And actually, you know what, maybe we'll leave it at that and maybe I'll split these up so you can find each video. So this will just be a review of the bow clock. There we go, the end. <laughs>